Okay, so here is a side view of the CX-16 uh, middle drill base, I would say, uh, with um, the column uh, for the head taken off. And now just with mounted what I call the saddle. I've scraped the saddle to a nice fit. So, um, yeah, give it loose. It runs smoothly along the travel it shall have. Then I've come to the point where I've attempted to replace the two millimeter lead, lead screw with a ball screw because I have just uh, ordered a set of controllers or controller and, uh, and motors to CNC uh, light it. I would say light because it's the, it's the lowest entry level CNC you can get. But anyway, I wanted to have some sort of two axis um, control of the table and, uh, and saddle here. Uh, not necessarily from up and down, so I could at least uh, do some 2D milling. But um, anyway, I went for this uh, cheapest 3D controller. So you can use the normal lead screw, but um, mm, since I have it all apart, I'll go for this instead. So that's one move. But the reason I pull it all apart is that. Um, uh, I found out uh, that uh, well everything wasn't in order for hundred percent when it comes to geometry. So now I have established a base where I have established that this is now running true with the base here, and I wanted to establish that first uh, so that the table now uh, has a chance to run exactly as it should. So I've scraped these two too much. And uh, with the gib here also in place, of course. The gib is uh, rather special, I would say. At least I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen uh, such a scheme either. That it's only bearing on this surface, so rather short, and the gib is longer on both the this side and this side, so that's a first. I had to shim it a little bit on the rear side. It's, it's rather thick and it won't bend. And then it has a screw here that you just, uh, that with the head, that just enters this slot here. Anyway, I've now done a lot of work on the saddle, and before that, done a lot of work on the saddle, as I said, and before that also on the base here, because I found out that neither of these ways were true to the column base. Can be that the head was okay, but that they have corrected two mistakes so that it ends up with zero anyway i wanted everything here from the base up to be true and uh, uh, i couldn't really trust uh, like a surface like this which is um, of course not bearing but could be okay to use as a reference couldn't trust that because even though these were they weren't, weren't um, equal height so it can be that everything, as I said, when mounted was okay, but um, I wanted to have it you know, from the base up. So uh, scraping here, also a little bit uh, tricky when you don't have references to, to follow. And of course, normally you will have one of these signs here to use as reference, but since it's painted and, uh, and um, well, you can't use them as reference. And this was not useful as reference, and uh, you know, that's a fight. Ended up with a little bit of uh, extra work there. But I finally then have proven that the surfaces here, measured with the uh, running the indicator up and down on the saddle, matches to this. 
So now scrape this to a static fit here, so I can mount the saddle. Uh, sorry, the the column on top. Of course, I will have to scrape that, I guess. Also, uh, I'm finished there with this and the saddle, and also finished with the other side of the of the table, which also wasn't really flat, neither on the top side nor on the bottom, but. And uh, really two planes with the reference to the signs, so I will deal with that later. I've also taken the time to mount uh, the Sony magnet scale the year I once bought some years ago. And as you can see, I mounted the DRO on a pole here, an angle bracket, so to speak, and just uh, used a, an existing hole, which was for the, I guess, for a cover here. The cross feed is mounted in the usual way and this is I think inferior to what you have on the Myford where you can run a, a magnetic scale underneath here just to mill a, a slot for that but anyway it will then interfere somewhat with the, the tailstock but not really a big problem on this lathe so uh, just clears now with, um, with uh, enough space there to over and, and that's so, and then I mounted the scale inside there with a double, so to speak, um, a plate. So that uh, the DRO is in there and the plate that is mounted to, and then another plate on top goes here, mounted here. The same on the rear. And then from the rear, uh, the head is really mounted in here, uh, which is uh, a bit also awkward. That's why I have thought I would have to protect it as best I could, uh, because I didn't want it to protrude longer here. Uh, I could have mounted the whole thing to the rear. I actually have space for that, but I think and I hope it will be okay in here. And of course, the usual uh, mounting of the um, uh, longitudinal axis underneath here just directly to the to the rear so this is just a very simple task and I have done it that way or this way with the, just a bracket from the head down there and up this is a steel bracket up to the head uh, up to the saddle and then just on the other side. So this is uh, the simplest way, I think. And I also switched out the DRO on the mill to one which came from the same company that really was the Myford ones. It's called Machine DRO. I think this is a Chinese uh, some sort brand. Anyway, the old one started to malfunction from some of the scales so I um, I just reused the same mounting as for them for instance in the front here and just uh, of course uh, a little bit different cover and such but the, the mounting is almost the same I hope also of course it's a nice addition I never seem to get rid of all the mifers so in the current projects I have the uh, of course now just done the DROs and then mid into the mill drill uh, and then I have also the this ML10 I will finish and then I have uh, several Myfords, Super 7s and ML7s that in, in various condition stages of restoration. I have a failman table for a friend I'm going to scrape. I have the table over there for the CS16. And uh, while I'm at it, i read on a little bit my two small spaces. So here will be a place for the grinder, the sake grinder, when it's finally finished. And, and uh, the rest of the grinding there. And the sake grinder is, of course, uh, a long-term project. Um, it shall live over there when it's finished. I use the crane there, I guess this summer and then get it out and take apart this um, stand 
let me say, or the lower part. Get all the, all of this done, even painting, I guess. And then uh, we have a lot of different stuff in here. The saddle, table, of course. So, but that's a long-term job. My more normal uh, work area with the press, of course, and I will redo this when I get rid of something on the floor there. Also, that will go. So I will move that more over there. And we will space in the middle, which I like, and then of course the drill press and the shovelin and the lathe in the rear there. And uh, I think organizing it with two long benches like this with space. Now it's a lot of my first stuff all over. And with a the bench there with ample room, it's, it's, it's okay. Just as I said, get rid of that in the middle there. So I'll move this bit bit over to the, the granite there. This will hopefully serve me better than the the other uh, layout of the work uh, area. And uh, you might have seen this stool here. That's one of the best investments I've ever done. So just sitting on that. It's really, really comfortable. Saves me a lot of back and um, leg work. Standing over, bending over, and then, uh, you know, Part of getting old, I guess, but it's really a nice addition that can get, you know, easily around and it's comfortable. So, uh, 